Here's a population modeling problem from the book. Um, it goes a little bit beyond just the regular exponential growth model. That would be dp dt equals kp, where time, t is time, p is population, and k is a growth rate. So they've added a couple of twists here. One is a pretty simple twist, which is um, k is the relative growth rate of the population. Well, the, same, the simplest model, that's due to birth minus the death rate. And so that's um, really present in most population models, that the, the growth rate of the population is actually birth min rate minus death rate. The other thing, which is more important that they've put in, is an emigration rate, a constant flow of people, a constant rate of people leaving the, the country. And uh, that's m greater than zero assures that this actually is something that decreases the DPDT, the population growth rate. And that's going to be a minus m. Um, the other conditions, alpha is assumed to be greater than beta, so that if you didn't have emigration, k would be positive, And you'd actually have population growth, and not decay. Um, and then, as usual, we have initial condition, p of zero, and we're just going to call that p naught. So what's one thing, the other thing that's weird about this problem for us, unfamiliar, is that there's not a single number in here at the initial phrasing of the problem. It's all very general. And that has immense power, because we, if somebody asks us, if somebody had us do this where all these numbers, m and k and alpha and beta and p naught, were put in as explicit numbers, and then said, oh, wait, no, let's do another model. Let's do a different country. Or I got the numbers wrong. We'd have to redo the whole problem. And of course, if we do it all with letters, it's much more powerful. We're going to get a general formula. But we're going to have to deal with a lot of letters. That's OK, because everything but p and t here is a constant. OK, very important. Let me just write that down. Everything but p and t is a constant. And we know that those are simple in calculus as long as we know how to deal with them correctly. OK, exclamation point for emphasis. So. Um, we don't already know the solution to this guy. We're actually going to have to uh, going to have to solve it. Okay. Now, if you look uh, in the the problem that we were doing, and we'll get I'll come to this at the end. They do actually put in numbers at the end to really make this very specific. And so, if you wanted to, you could put in numbers at the start. But of course, it's much more powerful to leave them as letters. Okay. So let's do this. It's a separable differential equation. And I mentioned one of the things I mentioned in class is that. A lot of people uh, like move the dt over and then distribute it out. And you don't want to do that. You don't want to take quantities um, and express them as differences when they could be expressed as products. Okay. So in fact, let me just multiply the dt over and show that. This is kp minus m all times dt. You don't want to distribute that because that would be something would be, which would be good if you want to add and subtract to separate. We never do that. That's not how separable equations work. We have to divide or multiply, okay? And um, so this is going to be dp over dt. Oh, sorry, just going backwards. There we go. Over kp minus m equals dt. So now we're going to integrate both sides. And the right hand side is easy. That's going to be t plus c. The left hand side, we have to use u sub. Okay, so it's really, really important that if I have the integral of dx, say, over some function of x, that is not equal to just ln of absolute value of whatever that something is. It's not equal. I can't stress this too much. It's incredible. This is a general problem, but it's especially with dx over something that everybody wants to say, oh, that's ln of something. The only one that we know is dx over x, and that's it. Or if we can use u sub and get it to du over u, not 2u, not u plus 3, not u squared plus 1, not u squared, the only integral that we know to work that works with the ln is du over u. OK, so can we actually get this? Well, yeah, we can if we're careful. OK, so let me just erase that for a second. Let me just start a new little uh, window. So this is going to be our sidebar cal calculation. This is going to be k u is kp minus m, because that's going to turn the bottom into just plain u. That's how u sub works, is it packages that up correctly. This is going to be kdp, and then m is constant. And so we're just going to get, that's not going to contribute. The thing we see that we have to match in the integral is a dp. I don't know why I did a fraction there. OK, and so oh that's why, because that's, that's going to be 1 over k du. Okay, so in fact, 
we can now put that back in here. There's no limits, it's not a definite integral, so we don't have to do that part of the sidebar calculation. And so we're going to get 1 over k integral du over u. And notice I took the k out as far as possible and, note, and took it all the way out of the integral to make it clear that it doesn't have any role in the integral. It's really important that you, if you leave it here, a lot of people will say, oh, that's ln of ku. That's the same mistake. du over ku, the integral of that is not ln of ku. It's just, that's just not correct. It has to get down to just this and nothing else. And that we can do that because the 1 over k does come out as a constant. Okay, now we're ready to go. That is 1 over k ln absolute u equals t plus c. Or, now start stripping stuff off, ln of absolute value, oops, absolute u equals kt. And we could call it kc, but you know what? c, nothing else, not t, not k, not m, not anything. You can't play this kind of magical game with anything else. But c just means add whatever you feel like. And if I say add whatever you feel like and then multiply it by k, well, that's kind of silly. It's just still add whatever I feel like. And so we can just call that plus c. Okay, it's a little bit of a weird game we play, but it's really useful. It makes things not too complicated. So, now I strip this off. It's going to be e to the quantity kt plus c. And again, that's going to be that's going to be e to the c, e to the kt. Now, you notice, if you look at the derivation of the, the um, if you look at how this works with just dp dt equals kp without the m, it's exactly the same. And it's some weird stuff that's a bit unfamiliar, but... Um, it's the same same kinds of steps. Now this would put in a plus or minus e to the c, e to the kt. And this is something that we've talked about before, where in fact, you know, I say take an arbitrary number, take e to that, okay, that's going to be an arbitrary positive number, and then I say, oh, never mind, it can't actually be negative, which is what the plus or minus does. All that does is it ma makes it an almost arbitrary number, c. And wait a minute. Could it be zero? Well, it seems like it couldn't be zero, but wait a minute. That would be saying u couldn't be zero, but u is kp minus m is here, and that's exactly what can be zero. If kp minus m is zero, then in fact, let's see. If kp minus m is zero, then this is zero, but if kp minus m is zero, then p is a constant. It's just m over k, and that would be zero as well. So as very often happens with this kind of thing, c actually can be 0. And so I'm just going to emphasize that. Sorry, it's going all crazy here. Um, any real number c. Now we're going to actually determine c in a minute because we have an initial condition. OK, we're not quite done yet. Uh, let me start a new, uh, a new thing, though. It was getting kind of hard to, to fit this on the screen. OK, so that now I put back the uh, kp minus m. Okay, and I solve for, for solve for p, and that's c e to the kt plus m, and then p just divide by the k, and you know what c over k? Yeah, let's just call that c. Actually, you know what? No, it's gonna it's gonna be a little prettier. I think if I leave it, uh, if I leave the k like this, c e to the kt plus m. Okay, there we go. We are not quite done yet. Okay. This is the sidebar, remember, from the integral. Let me just skip over that. Can't do things sideways very easily, so uh, sorry about the weird flow. Okay, so now, initial condition. Solve for C using the initial condition. Okay, so I put P in as P sub 0, P naught, and then I put in uh, t equals 0. So e to the 0, I'm putting them in here, e to the 0 is 1. Okay, that's not too hard to solve for c. And so in fact, I could have maybe done this a little more efficiently, because you notice I'm actually pushing back, stuff back over to here. If I had solved it right here, it would have been more efficient. But let's keep going. kp naught equals c plus m. c equals k p naught minus m. And finally, we just plug that back in. So p of t, we've got our function. Fair amount of work here, but welcome to actual differential equations. This is what it's really like. And um, this is going to be kp naught minus m, and plugging that in for c, e to the kt plus m.
Now, that's not the kind of answer that folks in an intro calc class particularly like because it's got too many letters, but it's beautiful. It's a beautiful answer. It's a completely explicit function, and the only reason it's got a lot of letters is it's just waiting for me to plug numbers in. And so if I wanted to figure out the explicit solution to um, a particular problem, all I need to do is know those numbers. So for example, in part D, let me skip to part D. Uh, they give us that, so t equals 0 means, first of all, that means 1847. Okay. Um, and then this is Ireland in, during the potato famine. p sub 0 equals 8 million. They tell us that. They tell us the difference between the relative birth and relative death rates. Oh, they're actually not even telling us alpha and beta separately. They're telling us k, which is the difference of alpha and beta is 1.6 percent. Ooh, make sure you don't put in 1.6. That would be 160 percent. This is 0.016, okay. And uh, the it says about 210,000 inhabitants per year emigrated, okay. And that's just M. M equals 210,000. Okay, so if we wanted to, we could just plug in all those numbers into our master formula, and then we just get a very explicit thing. It's just number times number times e to the number t plus number. It's really not a super complicated function. Okay, and I might graph it later if I feel like I'm not getting too long. But let's look at b and c first. And actually, we'll, we'll look at what d actually asks us. Um, b says, what condition on m uh, leads to an exponential expansion of the population? Well, it seems like anything's going to be exponential. It's an exponential function with some with some dressing on it. Number, number, number. But the keyword is expansion. When is this actually going to end up being growth? Okay. And there's two ways to to answer that, either by looking at the solution or by looking at the differential equation. I'll look at the solution first, but the, looking at the differential equation is slicker. But since we just got the solution, let's look at use it for something. Um, for example, the kind of function we're looking at, just I'm not even going to plug in the, the 8 million and all that kind of stuff. I'm just going to plug in some, some very fake numbers. What if I had like uh, 1 fifth, these are very fake numbers, uh, time, 1 fifth times, and suppose kp0 minus m ended up being 4 e to the 5t plus 12. That's the kind of function we got here. Number, number e to the number t plus number. Okay, that guy is going to be an exponential growing function because it's got it's basically e to the five t, which certainly grows, times a number plus a number. Nothing here is going to make it go downward. But what if that number were negative? Oh, that's going to be exponential growth, kind of, but in the negative direction. Let's just graph that. Okay, that's going to be going downward. And in fact, it goes downward pretty aggressively because I put in some somewhat big numbers. That's going to be something that goes poof, goes negative. Okay, so what's going to happen is if kp not minus m, depending on the sign of that guy, we're going to have different, rather different scenarios. Okay, so the exponential expansion is going to be where kp not minus m is positive, and then c, it asks for um, constant population. That's going to be where k p naught. If I start out exactly balanced, so in other words, k p naught. K p naught has a very meaningful role. You multiply the relative growth rate times the actual population. That's the growth rate that you would have from birth and death if there were no emigration. If that's equal to the emigration, then you're just going to keep supplying the emigrants but not change your population. In an interest, like in a money problem, that would be exactly a situation where um, you, t you spend all your interest every year. This is exactly analogous to, so to interest and like loan problems. Uh, and then, oh yeah, and then what about decline? That's the other part of C. Well, that's just the, la the last possibility. That's kp naught minus m is negative. Or in other words, oh yeah, I should have put here. This is, this is where m is less than kp naught. The emigration is less than the natural amount of growth. And here is where m is greater than kp naught. 
KP naught is how much your population wants to grow. M is the emigration, and if you have emigration more than the natural growth rate, then you're going to decline. So that's coming out of knowing the solution, but we didn't have to actually do all this work with the integration and stuff to get that. Let me just copy down the, um, the original differential equation. Because, remember, growth, constancy, or decay, that's all about dpdt. Growth, that's going to be where dp dt is greater than 0. OK, but dp dt is kp minus m is greater than 0. And if I just say, well, suppose I'm looking at time 0, I'm starting out this process, then at time 0, that's going to be positive if, if p naught is positive. OK. And so that just leads to exactly the same kind of condition. And similarly, if dp dt is, is 0, that's where kp is equal to m exactly. That's this guy, but just evaluate at time 0. And then where this is negative. So this, the fact that this uh, quantity shows up both in the original equation and in our somewhat complicated solution to it is not remotely accidental. That's controlling the, the, the behavior of this system. And so D actually asks you, given these parameters, simply was it expanding or declining right then at 1847 with 8 million people? Okay, and so let's just copy this down. Um, and just calculate it out. So k p naught, the crucial quantity is k p naught, growth minus emigration, and that's going to be 0 0.016 times 8 million minus 210,000. That's negative. Okay, negative 82,000. And so, in fact, the population was declining. It was not enough to, uh, so the, the natural births were not enough to offset this large number of people who were, uh, who were emigrating. And the population really did decline uh, of Ireland at that time. Uh, let's see, what else did I say I was going to do? Um, no, that's a good place to stop. <laughs>